Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome and thanks for logging on. If you love this timepiece, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for inquiring about the price of this or any timepiece on any of our platforms. Please reach out to me directly, tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. As I always attempt when reviewing a Bove watch, I'm going to try not to call this Sportster Seguero chronograph a watch, because I know Pascal Rafi, the lord and owner of Bove, hates to hear his timepieces described as watches. So here goes, can't tell you how long it'll be before I screw this up. Taking a look at the timepiece, you can see this is one of Bove's occasional efforts to create something that's both a little bit more accessible and just as often automotive themed. Rolls-Royce, Pininfarina, and the automotive-inspired Sportster right here. Powered by a top-level 7750 automatic base, it gives you a case design reminiscent of Bove's own Amadeo. So it's Stainless steel, this model originally launched in 2009 in precious metal, but 46 millimeters in diameter, 17.4 millimeters thick, and from lug tip to lug tip, 54 millimeters across the wrist. It is a large timepiece, and perhaps that word is apropos, because this one has the look of both a pocket watch and a clock on the wrist. Taking a quick look across the wrist, you can see that the case itself is 46. So while the lugs do overhang the edge of my wrist, I'm not as offended by it as I normally would if the lugs were integral to the case on something this large. I would actually wear it, and I'm gonna zoom out to get a better sense of perspective. I think this fits me, and it's very comfortable. The rubber strap is super flexible, and the lugs give you a great deal of articulation. So there's my hand, there's the rest of my arm. Proportionally, it's big, it's thick, it's chunky, but I like it, and yes, I would. Taking another look, you could see that the lugs are in conventional hinges rather than fixed horns. And we have a rubber strap with a matte finish and a couple of different articulated character lines built in. On the underside, there's a little bit of a hollow to let the wrist breathe. This is a brand new Bove factory strap with super supple black rubber. Sportster, you can see that the strap is model specific. We have a pin buckle, Bove branded and polished. These are made in a castle in Moitier. Bove, somewhere between about 1,500 and 2,000 watches a year. A very unusual brand in that they do not advertise at all. Everything is strictly word of mouth between clients. Brand represents Representatives do go to trade shows, but often without a large setup. It is viable, and again, the auteur qualities of Pascal Raffi means that Bove watches rarely look like anything else in the industry. So here you have a case with several different steps to the case flank and the bezel. You can see it has multiple flanges leading up to a crystal with dramatic boxed profiling. That is an expensive crystal. Cutting them like that does not come cheap. We have bulk horn style chronograph pushers. They are actually not screw downs, even though the crown is a screw down and the watch is 300 meters water resistant. These are not screw downs. They do not need to be screwed in or out in order to use the chronograph functions. And they're capped by little pieces of rubber, as is the primary crown. The timepiece features a double scale. There's a polished pulsation scale outboard, so you can rapidly, in 15 pulses, gain the pulse per minute rate of your patient if you're a doctor. And then inboard of that, there's a tachymeter scale, which can be used along with the serpentine seconds hand of the chronograph to reveal the speed of an object, such as a race car across a kilometer. The dial is hand-buffed, multi-step black lacquer, rich and lustrous like enamel. We have polished red frames for the date, which is double digit, as well as your chronograph minutes running seconds and chronograph hours. There is loom. We'll take a look at it now. Now, the Sportster is sporty. Seguero, as you can see. So this is the Seguero chronograph in the Sportster line. Just to make things clear, Sportster is the collection, Seguero chrono is the model. Take a good look and you can see that the numerals have been applied to the dial, along with applique luminescent plots outboard. This is an upscale three-dimensional dial that reeks of quality. Turn it all over and you can see on the back it's a little bit more conventional. That said, there are also elements here like particularly the reset hammer or the reset lever of the chronograph. You could see the reset lever and the polished hammer below. These items have been finished 
And the more I look, the more I find here. This is an exceptionally high grade of 7750 chronograph. And so automatic winding, unidirectional action, four hertz beat rate, 28 joules, including the double digit date complication. You've got the 42 hour reserve, which is about average for these. But if you pull the crown out, and I'll demonstrate that in just a moment. We do have a quick set function for that double digit date and a hacking or stop seconds function. You'll also see, because it says right on the bridge, that this was adjusted to five positions, which is the chronometer standard. And when I pull the crown out, you could see that the balance itself has splayed spokes, indicating a chronometer grade balance. So this is likely a hot rodded version of a 7750 hot rodded in-house at Beauvais. In particular, elements like the satination on the stop start levers of the chronograph on the cam spring anchor satination and polish and beveling on the cam itself. The presence of both polish on the lever and satin on the hammer of the chronograph start-stop lever. You can see that in action. Differential finish. To achieve that, they probably would have pulled apart that pressed component in two pieces, finished it by hand, and then pressed it back together. You can also see that the spring that acts on the hammer, that too has been satinated in contrast to the polished base. There's a lot going on here, and some of it is genuinely surprising, the kind of thing I never see on 7750s, and it's genuinely impressive as well. Someone spent a lot of time on this movement, both adjusting it and decorating it. And you could see on the lever and the hammers that fall on the hard cams, you could see that the lever has been beveled on its side and satinated across its top, and then the hammer below it that acts on the cams, that's been polished. This is very impressive stuff. We also have blued screws and likely machine applied Cote de Genève and engine turning, but there's enough attention to detail here that I consider this to be a substantial step above, say, a 7750 that you'll find in a Longine. Reach out to Team Osso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details of this timepiece, which I am certain I called a watch several times, but Pascal, if you're watching, I did my best.